Well, I had an idea in my head right before I started jamming on this little track here. This is in the key of D. It's a medium slow blues. Once again from the MCCD sessions. So good to see you guys. Thanks for tuning in. We've got a G harp. You saw that in the title probably. I was thinking about chopped bass lines before I started this little stream here. I was thinking about, you know, when you're playing, you learn these like walking bass lines. right you get this little bass line going but what I was thinking about is like playing I often play stuff like the feet off the bass line so I was gonna share some of that or <laughs> where you don't play the complete line you sort of stop and you either stop at some point in the line and leave out the rest or you add something different to it like the first example and I know I haven't shared any of what that is yet but I can um, it's a, it's a great way to start to learn how to improvise from structure. And I'm always talking about this topic. I can't help it. The other way to learn how to improvise from structure is to attend my classes <laughs> and check out like Slim Harpo, listen to his music, Jimmy Reed. Uh, we were talking about all this in the last two videos. Same thing. They have a structure to it that once you learn it, you learn how to manipulate it and create something new from it. So I don't know if I could work on something with you just share a little bit keep this loose today um i don't feel like being in crazy teaching mode just want to hang out for a minute but <laughs> like you bring in that line No bending, I'm just kind of using like tongue blocking and drawing low notes off of the bass line area. I'll show you that. This is cool. If you got a G harp, let's just do a single note. So just two draw, three draw, four draw on a G harp, and then five blow, two draw. So two draw, three draw, four draw, five blow, two draw. And then throw your octaves in there after the two draw and you get, or after the three draw, right there. And that's what I'm doing right here. So now I can take that little modified bass line thing and just groove on it and improvise around it. What's wrong with this? How's the mix? There it is. Starts with that same line. The branch out. Still playing with the same line, but feeding off it.
Tomorrow's class day. No, Saturday is class days. Don't forget, if you want to check out Slim Harpa, I've been talking about it the last two videos, but uh, I'll be teaching some cool tunes. Everything's recorded. I've got some notes. And I've decided, thanks to the help of my membership, to black out the notes so we can ear train some of these lines together from Slim Harpo. So you get all the notes up on the screen and we black them out. And then we try it once, just totally ear, totally ear training it, playing it um, just from the recording and then me kind of slowing it down and then revealing and revealing the tabs and playing it so you can see what's going on slowly, one line at a time. Slim Harpo. So this track is a medium slow blues in the key of D. I'm in second position. Um, and I'm just working again with that line. This was the line we played. By the way, you could work that up to the second octave. Uh-uh. Oh, it goes back to the sixth. Okay, here it is. Here's the line up top. Kind of cool, right? Cool stuff, right? So that simple line, a beginner could play that. A beginner could totally play those lines, but the challenge is getting it to fit in the pocket and getting it to kind of groove and then figuring out what you can do to branch off and not lose it. I'm telling you guys, like if you're struggling to improvise because you don't know what to play, this is what I hear from people. I don't know what to play, or I, I feel repetitive or um, lost. Play one thing over and over before you go anywhere else. Just play something and repeat it until you can make that one idea fit into the pocket and feel good and be musical. And I just gave you that line that you can do it with. Shane, what's up, man? So what is the line that Ronnie's talking about in case you just jumped on? Two draw in second position on a G harp. Two draw, three draw, four draw, five blow, and then two draw. All right, I'm going to my channel. That's why I'm stalling here. Hold on. Okay. Please, no, don't talk. Hey, I stopped it. Hey, there's everybody. Good to see you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for... Tuning in tonight, be sure to give me a like so I can reach more of you out there and connect and subscribe if you haven't. We're talking about playing in the key of D on a G harmonica and chop. we started by chopping. It started by talking about the bass line. That's what we did first. We went... And actually, I played just a variation there. I didn't play it like that last time. I gave you the middle register, and I changed up part of the five chord. I'm just improvising again. I can't help it. If I'm going to play something that I learned from structure now at this point, it's going to come out like the way that I that I play it, right? But I could play it to you exact. And the thing is, you do kind of want an exact version at first so that you can lean into that. So I took the line... <laughs> That's it. You can throw the chords around it. And I put on this track and just sit there. Make yourself like really feel what the heck you're playing before you move around and try to improvise. That's the coolest stuff is when you can like, you're barely doing anything as far as like uh, pyrotechnics. You're not getting fancy with it, but you're connecting emotionally and you're in great time. And it just feels good when you do that. And guess what? If it feels good for you, it feels good for the people listening. That's what's important. Show us more, says Eleni. Is that right? Did I say that right? 
So if you're having that problem, crush with 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 your improvising, yeah, play less and make it repeat it and just until it means something, and then imagine it growing branches and arms. Let's do one more little round here. Like, um, what the heck just popped up? This is a different key. We could do it in third position. This is now an A. I, somehow a different track came up. I guess I let it play into this track. There's the line. I didn't even mean to do that. Exactly. So I'm not going to leave that for a while. I got to make it mean something. Let's start to slowly manipulate it. That's the idea. Perfect. Because the line I played, I didn't think. I just like randomly let a, a line come out. I played one draw, two full step bend, and four draw into the four bend. And just made it fit to this little lounge chill blues in A. And you heard what I did with it. And then I stopped and thought about it for a minute. I was like, what do I want to, maybe there's something that's, and it hit me. Can you play it easily in the next register? and play around with that, and that's what I did at the end. Five draw, uh, four draw, five draw, uh, eight draw. So, yeah, and the first one was one draw, two full step bend, again, four draw into four bend. Simplify. Yeah. Play when, I, I can't, I mean, I can kind of play when I'm a jamming, but no. I'm not gonna go there tonight. Thanks for the request, but not. I'm not gonna play Whammer Jammer. I can. I don't. I, I don't have it down to to be able to just perform it right now for sure. Although I've thought of doing a class on it and breaking it down. It's a it's a wonderful song to learn. Um, yeah, I mean it's awesome. Magic Dick on the harmonica playing Whammer Jammer. <laughs> so there's more requests coming. I'm just checking in with these chats here. These, um, yeah. Hey, Adam, what's going on? Well, good to see all you guys here. Uh, we're talking about like chopping uh, bass lines and finding simple ideas that we can feed off of to improvise, and letting random tracks come up to play to that force even more improvisation and unpredictability out of you because if you don't know what you're gonna what's coming your way and you have to just take what comes it forces you to think outside of the box hey greg welcome thanks for being here Got a 
back it up. expect that did you <laughs> that is my dog's toy she loves that thing mr. Bill is I think one of her favorite all-time dog toys and the fact that he still can say oh no is remarkable he's been through hell and back let me tell you so that's the deal that's what I got tonight we're just j just jamming in the this, these various tracks that come up talking about ways to I love talking about improvisation. Honestly, like probably 50% of the content almost on this channel is talking about blues improvisation. The rest of my stuff is all at harmonica123.com where I offer more structured teaching uh, downloadable classes and live classes that I do every single month. I've got a membership. So that's where that's hosted if you're just joining. Subscribe to the channel because honestly, I need your help. I need your support. I'm going to roll out the membership, the YouTube membership. You might have noticed that many channels have a join button like right underneath um, above the chat area or somewhere right, you know, where right there in the video, you notice it says join. Well, if you click it, it's very much like Patreon, if you know what that is. If you don't, it's just tiered ways to support uh, channels. So I'm thinking of launching it. The first tier is just like, a simple, not too expensive, low tier that you get a badge and recognition every time we, I, I'm gonna go live a lot if I get people to actually join this. It'll encourage me to do this more often. And then, you know, the next tier you get like, a, I don't know, a shout out, or there's some sort of incremental uh, incentive until eventually at some tier I'm thinking exclusive content. <clears throat> Maybe something where you get two blues licks by ear exclusive videos because those are the most popular videos I do per month if you are at that next tier or something you know so if, look for that because I'm thinking of just rolling that out very soon to see how it goes <clears throat> I will tell you this I don't make much money up from YouTube if you ever wondered what does a YouTuber make I'm not a YouTuber I am a guy that's had a YouTube channel for a long time that uses it and posts on it, but I'm not a YouTuber. What I mean is that I'm not a professional YouTuber that is like structured and like edits their videos and posts on a very stringent schedule. And the goal is to build the subscribers up and make potentially a great living on their earnings. I don't get that. I My earnings are low and that's cool. But this little membership could be a great way to connect with you guys further and it'll help you guys figure out a way to support me. So yeah, look, be on the lookout for that. All right, let's go to a track here. What the hell is this? I don't even... Oh, that's terrible. Oh, there's two tracks going at the same time. That would... Go figure, that's something I would do. This track's a B, it's a swing. This one goes out to my buddy Pete Eicher.
third position. I'm just using an A harmonica here. This is all B major. It's not minor. It's just some cool little B up-tempo track. It's all of its MC, MCCD sessions. It's pretty much the only channel I use for if I want more of that straight ahead blues stuff, you know? There's other channels like Quist has some cool tracks. Um, Q-U-I-S-T. But MCCD is the one that I tend to use the most. Wait a minute, let's go to this chat. What's going on in the chat zone? Where'd it go? What times were good? I just figured all the time. Yeah, exactly. Well, for now, you're gonna have to deal with the ADD. Just, it's gonna, it's gonna happen when it happens, when I can find the time and motivation. For example, over the next few days, I have no time, zero. Not just uh, because I'll be teaching on Saturday, but tomorrow, no time, Sunday, no time. Like, you won't see me for a minute. So I recognize that, and I'm like, all right, get to it. Where the hell is the chat, y'all? I go to my channel. Let me try this again. Refresh my page. I love that the track is still... There it is. Now I see you guys. Dude, oh, I got to go get my eyes done. Somebody wrote me a message and when I saw, you, you know, about the... They were like... Because I mentioned in the last stream, like, I was making fun of my glasses, and I'm like... They're like, get, get, the, get the surgery. And I'm like, yeah, I should... I do play Augustine. I do play with a hybrid embouchure. I developed that way and it feels very comfortable. And in my opinion, there's a huge benefit to playing with a hybrid embouchure. For those that don't know what that means, it means that I, I switch back and forth from puckering to tongue blocking mid, mid riff. But there's a bit of a, <clears throat> an approach. I have an entire class called hybrid approach tongue blocking and puckering where I teach you my method of how I play. It's my entire attack of how I go at it. Um, but I'll, it centers around puckering a lot of the bends and faster riffs and definitely bending and, and using more pucker on holes one through three. But I use a lot more tongue blocking than I think people realize. If you go back and listen to this live stream, you'll hear that there are times when I actually live on the two draw and the three draw and even some of those bends, I do tongue block those now and it just, when it comes out, it comes out. But I don't always do it. <clears throat> Sounds like this, for example. I'm tongue blocking all that. But I sometimes do it as a pucker. And it sounds a little different. That's pucker. But there's a method to it. And it, to me, it feels really comfortable. And the advantage is you get the texture of both pucker and tongue blocking. You're not... To, I'm just going to say, like, I think um, I love the sound of people that are ex exclusive tongue blockers, but I prefer my sound. I prefer, what do you all think? I, I love the sound of tongue blocking. It's the biggest sound you can get. But then it all sounds very similar to my ear. And when I hear somebody who's only puckering, it sounds too thin. It sounds like it's just too thin. And you really got to work on pucker to get it to sound big anyway, right? It's going to sound... Small at first, but you can work on that. You can get your pucker to sound like really big. It can sound nice. That's all pucker. Um, but then there's the combination. And to me, that's what I landed on naturally. And it's been working very well for me. I really, I really dig the fact that I can blend these sounds at will. So that's a good question. Mm-hmm. What does that say? Breathing practice for harmonica, help with some tips. Well, learn how to regulate and just practice when you're not playing also. Just, just slow down your air. That's all exhale. Then do the same with inhale. So you're gonna get all your air out. By the way, it starts with a gulp of air in. And try to breathe in as slow as you can.
and I'm just showing you, I'm making the sound so you can hear, I'm puckering intentionally so you can hear the, the air. I'm regulating it to where I'm barely breathing and then bring that into your instrument. Just really gentle with the air and even, you know, try to use some sort of visualization maybe that you're playing across above and past the harmonica when you breathe out and way in and past your, your body almost visualizing the air moving and extending way past you so that you're reminding yourself to slow down the air. Do I ever use vibrato in my throat? I think that's where it's primarily coming from, yes. So I would, I would say that is accurate. It's kind of the epiglottis, this upper throat. I don't have any preference, Andy, with the embouchure though. I think they're both super valid. There are sounds that you can only do, in my opinion, you can really only articulate with pucker. I don't think that's really debatable, actually. I, I think even full-time tongue blockers will tell you this. I've heard it from them, from many of them. So there's just certain things that are more beneficial that, that sound better and work better and allow for certain articulations in a pucker that don't work in a tongue block and vice versa. And there's certain sounds with those chords and texture in a tongue block and you're never going to get with a pucker. So I say the following. If you say you're playing blues harmonica or you want to be a blues harmonica player, you must, in my opinion, tongue block to some degree to get some of that inherent language of blues harp, that texture. <laughs> the octaves and the tongue slaps specifically are what I'm referring to. Yeah, there you can't get around it. There, the flexibility and the freedom of the hybrid. Because, yeah, I can go real fast and fluid as a pucker. And then come up with, like, some tongue-blocking texture. And I it, it balances everything out. That's the beauty of it. Let's see. I Yeah. I, it really does sound very different, Crush. It's Tongue-blocking sounds very different than pucker. I can't do, that's a tongue block. I can't do that as a pucker player. It's not there, you can't do it. So there's definitely some texture going on with the chords and the notes underneath, and you can play octaves. Yeah, blocking now, overblowing a lot more. Awkward to switch. Well, from mostly tongue block to pucker just for for overblows. Yeah. Um for every approach, like I bet you there's so many different approaches if you like were to narrow in on like like for example, like when somebody chooses to use pucker, there's like a million variations of hybrid players, let's say. That's what I mean to say. Um and you got to find your angle that's comfortable for you and you can attack the challenging parts you're describing, like switching just for this one quick overblow and puckering. But you know, you know what though? You might find that if you practice your wherever you're coming from in the tongue blocked position to the puckered overblow, if you practice just that switch up over and over and get narrow in on that, that transition area, you might perfect it and it might feel very comfortable and fluid and it was worth working for. That's my approach to learning harp. I don't say it's out until I've really experimented, until I know that I've pushed the limits of, is this, not only is it doable, because there are things that are doable that, that I shouldn't do because they don't feel right and they don't sound right, but is it worth doing if, it's, if it ends up being like, coming out like. That's a great example. That's all. Uh, it's a two note, first two notes are pucker. And the last note is a pucker. The rest is tongue block. There's no, I can go as fast as I want. I don't have any, uh, there's no downside to, to switching in that example, but it's a challenging one. It's a 
it's 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 the octaves, not the slaps or the single notes, but it's it's going to tongue blocking. So there's these little points where you it might be worth the fight, is what I'm saying. Tongue block some chords, yeah, and tongue block some single notes, man. Get the single note to come out, especially on holes four and five and six. Yeah, the Cajun music needs it too. It's all sorts of stuff that we can learn just by being in the moment together. Take one more round here. My biggest tip to people trying to learn how to improvise harp, blues harp, move around less and leave more space. Move around less and leave more space. That means hold longer notes. Then sometimes switch it up and move around. A little more of a melodic, longer line. can't help it. I want to interrupt my own playing because I think of like, when I start playing, I think of things to share or ideas that pop up. But it's like living in these bends more often. That's the other thing that I don't hear a lot of players do is like live on those notes that have all the emotion a little longer. Hang out there. And less time on the, you know, the sweet stuff. Can, the natural notes are sweet as a long note. Absolutely, but like, we don't need a series of them going. That's not really blues. I'm not trying to make fun of anybody that's doing that, but it's not really blues. The language is more on those, you know, some of the bends that ha that come up in the scale notes, especially the ones on the bottom of the harmonica. You can't ignore them if you want to play blues. Yeah. Yeah, Ralph, thanks for the question. Um, Andy says, I totally agree with that, and experimentation is where I'm at. Yeah, cool. Uh, Ralph, uh, do you ever use a piano to check your, your note? Yes, I, I teach my students to do this too. You take, um, it's on my phone, which is live streaming, so I can't do it, but you pull up like your digital piano if you don't have the actual piano, and you go through it, learn the pattern from... Here, I'll show you exactly where. Let me turn this off. Jeez. Hold up. Let's see. Yeah, here's the pattern that I show on the piano. And then I'll explain a little bit about what I do with it. That's the pattern on the, that I would work with. So just to point it out, it's one blow, one bend, one draw to two blow. And I don't work with any of the overblows to do this, then just two full step, two half step, two draw. Three bend all the way down the step and the whole step and a half. And then full step, half step, Draw, four blow, four bend, four draw. And it's cool for you to practice that anyway, because that's the one of the, from here to here, from starting on the two full step, it's the only chromatic portion of the diatonic harmonica that you don't need overblows. 
It is the only full, fully mo where you can move for a while chromatically. So you should work that. You got your two full, two half. You got all the bends except for no. You got them all. That's why. That's why we do it like that. You got all the bends. Six draw bend is not in there, but you practice that independently. So yeah, you work it and you work on sustaining them, Ralph. Three half to three full. Two half step bend. Full step. So now I can go right to these notes and they're they're super available to me. So when I'm improvising, I am not afraid to go to these notes. In fact, I want them because they sound bluesier and I know and I know that I can control them so I can I can manipulate these notes also. I don't have to just land on the notes. I can go in and out of these notes and move around. I can treat it more of a legato bending approach. But that's control practice. That's a different type of practice. Let, let you hear what those sound like, those more flowing bends, but in the piano thing, you can make patterns up and down, like you know, and you can make it a halfway down, halfway up. So you really get creative with, uh, but you need the piano, yeah. You need the piano because your ear needs to hear what the hell you're trying to target. I mean, you just picked up the harp and went, uh, <laughs> unless you, you really can hear it and you can hear da 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 da. You know, I can hear that now in my head, so I know what I'm aiming for, but at first you need the piano to guide you. For sure. Mm-hmm. That's good stuff, you guys. Well, what else you got here? I do... Ah, uh, that sounds vaguely familiar, Bronco. I don't... No, no, I don't. I, I, I don't. I can't say that I know who that is, but I'll check it out. I'll check this person out. Batman in the house. <laughs> All right. That's a good bending exercise off a of two draw, two half step bend, and two full step bend. Draw, draw, half, half, full, full, half, half, draw, draw, and just keep going in that order up and down. Yeah, you can play chromatic on that blues, Muhammad. Absolutely. I, I would say go for the, um, start with like some third position is the most commonly recorded chromatic blues and listen to George Harmonica Smith, William Clark, Rob Piazza, Kim Wilson, Dennis Grunling. There's a lot of great players. Um, Rob Pepperosi. Philip Yers. As far as like where third position can be heard. The only problem with the harp trainer app is if you're relying on your eyeballs to do it as well as watching, you know, where you are, that can be nice and helpful, but the piano is the best. When you have no other accompaniment and no, you don't want the visual distraction. You just want the note in your ear. You know what I mean? Uh, those are good tools, though. I, I've seen these. There's multiple types of apps that can help you work on some of those bends. But get download a, the, a piano, a free piano app to your phone. Trust me. And learn. Start to just find. Start with the C note, uh, one the white note to the left of the two black keys. The sh right there. Just that's that'll get you on your the note you want. And grab your C harp and work it. Find the notes up in order and that will, your ear will, it, your playing will take off if you do this, I think. I never did this, by the way, when I was learning, but I, I came across it later on as I started to teach more. And then I did practice it a little bit and and because I wanted to know how accurate am I? Am I actually hitting the note that I think I'm hitting? I'm doing everything by ear, so it's kind of, you want to check it. Yeah, you do. Tulsa, that's right, for spa. If you want to learn more about the Society for the Preservation and Advancement of the Harmonica, go to spah.org.
Yeah. Blake, what's going on? What's going on, Texas? I, that's, that's where I grew up, man. Grew up in Dallas. You're welcome, Muhammad. Happy to help. Um, so we've been talking about some cool stuff today. Wait, what's this? Because I close my eyes while I do. So I, I, right. Don't look it after I think I got it. Well, that's good. That's what's important, I think. What, uh, what other stuff will come up if I just keep clicking in order? Oh, no. Bad idea. Terrible idea. In fact, let's close that down. The G harp is what we started on today, and there's some cool stuff. If you're just joining, you might have missed some stuff that we did early on. There's some cool things that we did. I would check it out. Come back and watch this video, please. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. I don't say that often enough, but I'm going to start to say that. And play this shuffle with me before I go today. So now that puts me in first position. Again, this track's in G. I'm playing some first position on a G harp. Trying to find some new... I think every time I play, I can honestly say, every time I play the harmonica, whether I'm at home just jamming to a track or if I'm playing a show, I am searching. That's what's go That's the only thing going. If there's a thought of any kind or, or something that's driving me, it's not necessarily... Um, the musical, I, what's, how can I say this? It's trying to find something that I haven't done before. That's what I'm trying to do. I know that I'm going to play some stock ideas or patterns in muscle memory, that that's just common. And that's actually good to do because that's how you develop your style and approach. Think about players like Jimmy Reed, like we've been talking about. Um, and any player, anybody known, like they have things that they just do. And it's like, it can be very repetitious, but you love it because like that's their thing, right? But you also want to find somebody who can, I think, what what excites me and inspires me is people that are reaching for something just on the other side. And they're trying to like go just past the edge to see what happens when they go into a little bit of the unknown. And how do you do that 
when you're in the moment feeling and moving in the in this muscle memory, you tr- I use the visual side of my mind to try to see something I haven't seen, not necessarily hear it. And then I just go there. I trust it. Like if I, It's like a flash of inspiration and you just go. Something like that, maybe. <laughs> That's what I think is happening. Yeah, thanks for hitting the like button. Crush, thanks for the reminder. Y'all can like this video and why? Not just to, to stroke my ego, but to help in some indirect way, perhaps. But to help the video get a little more traction, that helps my channel grow. So when you hit the like button, you're supporting me. It's a great way to support. Tuning in is a great way to support. It helps the video get traction, and that's cool, too. More importantly than any of that stuff, is it's nice to just be here and connect with you guys. Thanks for tuning in. I'm going to sign off, and y'all make it a good night. I'll see you soon. Hopefully, I'll see you Saturday at class. I've got a Slim Harpo class coming. Learn all about it at harmonica123.com. I'll see you.